But here's the problem with the gas line bill. Much of it is written this way. It's by the governor saying, trust us, we'll come back with the contract. Please don't ask us to put terms that protect the state of Alaska in the bill. Just trust us. Then they're going to come back two years from now, and they're going to say, oh, you have to vote for this, or else the oil companies will walk away and TransCanada will walk away. I'm not going to play that shell game. If there are things that protect the people of the state of Alaska, I want them in the bill. Um, and that's been the problem right now, is the administration saying, trust us, you know, you're going to have to spend roughly $2 billion in road infrastructure upgrades just for this gas line. Trust us, we'll negotiate that the oil companies maybe pay us a little bit of that money back. Well, I don't trust that that's what's going to happen. So I'm going to propose an amendment that says we should share proportionally in that $2 billion or $1.5 billion or whatever it is. And they say, trust us. We'll let other companies into the gas line. Well, I'm just not going to trust Exxon, Conoco, and BP to let competitors into the gas line. I want rules that allow us to have competitors that go up, explore, find more gas, find more oil, get that gas into the pipeline, get us more revenue from overseas exports. That's good for jobs. It's good for state revenue. But I'm not going to sit here and say, Oh, sure, Governor, I trust that you'll do the right thing in the future and that Exxon, Conoco, and BP will treat us fairly. This, we're a sovereign. If we want provisions in that bill to protect the people of the state of Alaska, those protections should be in the bill. We shouldn't not just give the governor this sort of blank piece of paper that's empty and say, we'll trust you to fill it out the way you think is right. He hasn't had a very good track record of standing up to BP, Conoco, and Exxon. Um, and... Um,